guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Dee aka the messy perfectionist and on my channel I like to share real talk inspirational personal growth life tips and more I'm a certified life coach as well as a certified holistic nutritionist also a Reiki practitioner and a mom of a beautiful little girl Lately, I've been sharing a lot about my personal health journey and particularly my VSG or vertical sleeve gastrectomy experience. I had my surgery on October 29th and so my nine month will be coming up here on July 29th. And for you guys that follow me, you probably have noticed I haven't done an upload since my six month update. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that, but I've had a really busy summer so far. I have been organizing things. I don't know if you can see behind me, I do my own nail art and things like that. So I finally got all my stuff organized, kind of rearranged my little uh, nook that I have for my nail and art and craft and sewing area. So I feel really good about my own little personal space that I have here. I have also been still doing the gym four to five days a week, plus doing like classes for my kiddo, including um, she's doing some swim classes and she was just doing dance and she did her little recital today, which was absolutely adorable. So I've just been really busy and we had family visit and her birthday and I planned and you know did all that stuff. I will um, hopefully go ahead and maybe insert some pictures for you guys if you wanna see some of those things that have been happening. If you'd like to see some of that stuff that's been going on in my life, but today I'm just going to talk a little bit about how I've been feeling this last couple of months, what has been going on, and maybe the not so perfect side of my weight loss journey and VSG experience. So if that sounds good to you, please stay tuned. So in addition to all of the wonderful busy craziness that I've had so far this summer and not had time to do an upload and organizing and all that stuff. Part of the reason that I have not also done an update is because I felt very stuck in the last like month and a half in my weight loss journey. And I didn't know what to talk about. And I also started feeling like I was a failure because the fact of the matter is I have not lost any weight in the last month and a half. Now I have lost a little bit of weight in the last couple of weeks, but um, that'll be part of my nine month post-op update that I upload in a few weeks here. So excluding that, I really didn't lose a lot in inches. I really wasn't watching the scale go down. And I realized that I, it kind of triggered some old emotional baggage that I thought that I was really past and thought I was through. And I talked to my best friend about it, um, you know, and I said, I just feel like a failure. I feel like I, you know, I've gone through all this. I had the surgery and this is it. I haven't lost any more weight. And I don't know what to say to my followers and to vlog about it. And she said, just be real. And she's right, because a lot of people that are posting their experience with VSG are the people that have lost over 100 pounds or more. A lot of people are sharing their perfect experience with it. Not not everybody, there are a few people that really go into um, kind of all the emotional baggage that they've been dealing with in their health experience. But I know when I was researching, I was just feeling a lot of positive vibes only. And it's not all sunshine and rainbows. You are going to have your plateaus, you are going to have your weight loss stalls, and you're also going to have your old triggers come up or you can have your old triggers come up. And for me, because I've struggled my whole life with weight loss, with um, past eating disorders, with 
uh, low self-esteem when I was growing up, feeling like I was completely inadequate and not worthy because I was the big girl. And I'm writing about a lot of this stuff, so as beautiful as that experience is in writing, and I love doing it, it brings some of that old stuff up that you think is kind of gone through. And I know I've said this in the past, but I need to take my own advice. Even when we think we're through something, as it comes up again, there's still some work to be done around that. And I'm also part of a group uh, through, it's called, it's through Rally, it's called Real Appeal. And it is a kind of weight loss lifestyle support program that my insurance offered through no cost to me. So I took advantage of it. And part of it is you have like, um, you can have one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions and you can have, um, you have group sessions. In the beginning it's weekly and then it goes to every four weeks for kind of maintenance. And they really address like, not just healthful eating habits, like truly healthful eating habits, but also kind of the emotional stuff. And what keeps coming up for me is, um, I'm still really attached to the scale and the number on the scale. And I'm very ashamed to say that because I'm the first one to say the number on the scale doesn't really matter. It can be an indicator of your health, but it is not the tell all. It is not. I have been in the past 300 pounds and had great blood sugar, great cholesterol, um, good blood pressure, all those things because I was eating healthfully and I was moving my body and I was doing those things and they, they were good. And your labs are going to be a much better indicator of your health rather than that number that comes up on your digital scale or if you had an old fashioned one, you know, a little dial scale. But even knowing this, and even expressing this to other folks, I realized I was still having an issue with that. And so what did I do? I went from weighing weekly to daily again, which is a terrible thing to do. Yeah, you know, it really is. It's, it, it has its purpose in certain scenarios where it can be a source of useful information, say, you want to tell if you have some food sensitivity issues to um, like in regards to retaining some water, it can be really helpful uh, to learn what those um, triggers can be. For an example, I love peanuts and peanut butter and obviously that's a high calorie food, but if I have peanuts or peanut butter, my, you know, typically the scale would go up the next morning it would be up like four pounds. Obviously I didn't gain four pounds overnight, but that's an inflammatory, you know, response to, to your system. So when I was learning more about my body in regards to what foods are good for me and bad for me, it was helpful in that way, like when I did HCG, but it's not something that is helpful now after having vertical sleeve gastrectomy surgery. And I've been told time and time again by my coach at Rally, by my dietitian, to stop doing that. And my dietitian has gone as far as saying uh, to throw the scale out. And I have not done that. My coach said to put it in the garage, put it out of the way. I have not done that. That is some crazy information for me. And I feel embarrassed about it. I feel like I failed in some way. I felt like I failed in some way because my weight loss stopped. And I know all these things, like my thyroid's been crazy, my hormones have been crazy. Um, my weight loss pretty much stopped after they took me off of my thyroid medication, even though I'm still feeling high level thyroid symptoms. Um, also, you know, I'm 42 years old, I'm starting to go through perimenopause, so I've got all those kind of hormonal type things happening. And I just realized that I needed to do some work around these triggers. So I needed to give myself some space from vlogging, 
from thinking about what I could put together that would be helpful tips and just kind of recenter and take care of me a little bit and uh, how I can be more gentle with myself and start refocusing again on my wins. I have lost over 70 pounds. Um, and like I said, I'll go through the details and my nine month post-op update is like I have been with inches lost and all that stuff. But I started having severe anxiety when I knew I needed to have my follow-up with my surgeon's office. And let me just say, they are really nice over there. Everybody's really great. My surgeon is wonderful. He's very funny. He's very personable. The dietitian, the, the front office staff, the back office staff, everybody, it's a non-judgmental zone probably the most non-judgmental zone I've ever seen from a doctor's office. And that is because they see heavy people all day long. And they understand that weight loss is not always just a matter of cut your calories and start exercising more. That is really an outdated way of thinking. I'm not saying that's completely wrong because it isn't. Obviously, when you have surgery you're eating less calories in general um, but and I say in general because there are things you can do to sabotage yourself like eating a bunch of ice cream would be very easy to eat and obviously that's high in calories but that's not what I'm doing so we kind of went through all that stuff when I was there but my blood pressure was high and it's been a minute since my blood pressure has been high at a doctor's office I have had very healthy, normal blood pressure in the last three or four months. Um, almost I've had a couple of low blood pressure episodes when I've been home um, that were a little scary, but my blood pressure has been like 112 over 70 uh, typically around. So it's been really good. And it was very high at the doctor's office, so much so that I had her take it a second time and I was just full of anxiety I was feeling very stressed out you know you could just kind of I can just feel it I can just feel it kind of going up it's probably a little high right now because I'm having some anxiety as I'm recording this but you know we went through the calories and how many calories you're eating and I was like well about a thousand calories and I get very frustrated because I was like I lose weight when I'm eating 800 calories it's so ridiculous like I felt so frustrated because I'm like seriously like that's the magic number for me it seems like if I'm eating around 800 calories I'm losing weight and it's really hard to continue to do that on a regular basis unless you're really being very rigid about things but he had some really great tips tips that work for me very well you know just um because you have a very small stomach after you have a vertical sleeve gastrectomy, you get full very quickly and you don't feel overly hungry unless it's uh, meal times, you know, like start to feel hungry around meal times. So, you know, just kind of going back to the basics of when I'm meal prepping, make sure I'm having, and I don't like raw vegetables, so make sure I have some, you know, cooked vegetables. Like I love broccoli and cauliflower and things like that. So I just kind of went back to doing that and having those so, you know, having making sure I'm having that with some protein instead of say like an English muffin with my egg for my lunch doing the broccoli with the egg so that I'm feeling satiated and um, obviously that's going to be less calories less carbs all those things the other thing that I noticed is helping is I got back on my kind of PCOS formula because I have polycystic ovarian syndrome or polycystic ovarian disease is my myo inositol and d -Cairo. and I've started that a couple weeks ago and immediately the weight loss started started up again um, you know slowly so don't know if that's coincidence but that does help with your blood sugar maintenance and all those kind of things and um, so I think that's making a difference, but I've just really had to step back for a minute and be a little kind to myself and kind of reframe the negative thoughts that started creeping in that I hadn't had in a really long time. So, uh, you know, instead of saying, what did I say? I said, I have loose skin and it makes me feel unattractive was the statement that I had come up with. And I reframed that and said, 
I have loose skin and it shows all the progress that I've made. And just really working at kind of those turning around of those negatives and finding the positive. And also, how would you speak to a friend? How would you say this to your you know, family? you wouldn't say you have loose skin and you're unattractive. Like, I, I mean, maybe you would, and if you do, you're probably not the greatest person in the world and I, you shouldn't be following me on this, but <laughs> you know, you shouldn't talk to people that way. But I would always tell a friend, look at all the positive things you've done. Look at, look at how far you've come. You know, I would not, and I do not look at people in that way. So why do I look at myself in that way? So yeah, it's just been kind of a little bit more of a personal growth experience. And also that, you know, having this surgery doesn't cure that. It doesn't cure those insecurities. It's not going to be your instant fix for those past trigger behaviors or mental states you still have to do that personal growth work and have all aspects of yourself moving in that same positive direction as much as possible and now i'm not saying you smile all the time and you feel happy all the time and no because there is such a thing as toxic positivity and i really wanted to talk about that because i think it's important we need to feel what we feel, but it's the difference of whether we stay in that feeling that makes us feel yucky. Is that helping? You know, you can ask, is this helping? Is it helping for me to feel this way and act this way or be this way? If it's not, move forward from it gently and gracefully and just do the best you can. That's all any of us can do. So I'm feeling a lot better now. I, like I said, I've had a really busy summer so far and I'm feeling really good about my personal space after I kind of got it organized. And I'm back to just weighing once a week now. I'm gonna weigh on Wednesdays. I was, I changed my day as well instead of weighing on Sundays. So I figured midweek and that's going to be my day. If I tell my, <laughs> If I catch myself doing it more than that, more than on Wednesdays, I will take the scale and put it downstairs somewhere or do something like that. You see, you see myself, you see me, I can't even, like, like why? Why does that happen? It's such an unimportant thing and all I can do is do the best that I can. I'm working out all the time. I'm getting stronger for sure. I mean, I have my physical limitations and I'll talk a little bit more about that on, in the next update for my nine month post-op. But I mean, I have a lot of things that I, I have a lot of things that have changed in very positive ways in the last eight months. And I need to remember that and focus on that. And I couldn't, my weight wouldn't budge before the surgery in the last three or four years. And now I am back to a size 12, which is where I was before I had my daughter. So after I had my daughter, I couldn't lose anything. It didn't matter what I did. I was just gaining, gaining, gaining. And then I just stayed at a very heavy weight for me. I was not feeling good. So I'm super excited. I'm, I'm almost down to that weight where I was before, the lowest weight I had ever been. I still just really want to break through it because um, that's like my big goal. But all I can do is what I can do the best to my ability and continue on and learn to love and respect myself and my body as I am. And that is the best advice that I can give you guys. Just always love yourself where you're at. Don't do things like crazy diets or have the surgery and expect that it's going to fix everything and that you're going to be happy if you do this and you know all these things love yourself before you do those things love yourself now as you are you're perfect as you are you're worthy of love as you are 
And with that, I am going to end this little video and probably change my nails, polish again. My husband says I change my nails every three days. He's incorrect. I do it once a week, but <laughs> I am having fun learning a little bit more um, techniques with nail art and stuff like that. Even though I'm not fantastic at it, I do have good nail shape, but not good with designs. Anyway, I thank you guys so much for watching and Please feel free to comment below any of your concerns, any of your questions. Um, let me know if you guys would like me to do a live q and I wanted to mention that in the beginning and forgot. If you do, let me know what day and time might work good for you. Would a Wednesday evening work better or would a Saturday evening work better? Let me know if that's something that anybody might be interested in and then we could actually have a little one-on-one -on -one talk. I would totally be open to that and I think it'd be a lot of fun. So I do hope everyone is doing well out there and I will be doing an update, like I said, on my nine month post-op with all the deets coming up soon. Until we speak again, have a wonderful day, be kind to yourself and others and I'll be talking to y'all soon, bye.